Hello friends, welcome to the video lecture series of engineering mathematics 2. In this lecture, we are going to discuss double integral. Double integral of the function of two variables x and y. Just before going to the double integral, I would like to explain the single integral and geometrical interpretation of the single integration that I am going to present. The function fx is this function. And this function is defined in the close interval a, b. Or you may take open interval also. And what I am going to do, I am going to divide this interval a, b into n parts by putting those points x1, x2, x3 up to x n minus 1 if the last point is x n. Distance between x0 and x1 is very small and I erect a rectangle like this in between x1 and x2, the second rectangle I have erected, then in third pair third rectangle and so on. So what I am going to calculate, I am going to calculate area under this curve. The width of this rectangle will be very very small because here this red portion are the unwanted portion that I don't want and how the red portion will be minimized or will approach to the zero area if we break AB into large number of sub intervals. You know? In short, when n becomes so large it is near to infinity, then width of the rectangle will be very very small. That's why I have written limit n tends to infinity. This n is going to the infinity and sum of all the rectangles will be the area under this curve and this fx is the height of the rectangle and this much is the width of the rectangle and this width of the rectangle is the small increment in x, this is small value of x that I have denoted by dxi, x1 star is the point in the first interval. The first interval is x0 a1 or you may call this a x1. In that interval, this x1 star I am taking the point and since the width of the rectangle is very small, then f of x1 star is the height of the rectangle and height of the rectangle multiplied by dxi is width of the rectangle will be the area of the rectangle. This area of rectangle plus second area of the rectangle here I will put the point x2 star, x3 star and so on. In this way large number of rectangles I will be getting and I am going to take sum of all areas of the rectangle and you please remember the width of the rectangle is very very small means n is very large. Here I have written limit n tends to infinity and sum of all these areas of the rectangle will be the area under the curve y is equal to fx and this can be written as integral of this fx in the limit a to b. In double integral what we do the we are calculating volume under the surface. See this is the surface and volume under this surface I want. So what I will do, I will be taking projection of this surface on xy plane. This is xy plane, this is z axis, this is x axis, this is y axis. The projection of the surface I have taken on xy plane and projection of that particular surface is the rectangle. In this rectangle and the rectangle is defined like this. Rectangle is AB cross CD. Width of the rectangle is B minus A and you may say the length of the rectangle is D minus A. What I am going to do, I am going to form the small rectangles by drawing vertical and horizontal line or you may say the small rectangles or small grids. In each grid, the Xi, Yj be the point, Xi, this point I have taken in this grid, Xi, Yj be the point in the grid. You may take x1, y1 or x1, y2 and then x3, y4 like that. And the single point I have taken here. And how many grids are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 1, 2, 3, 4. 24 grids are there. But here, here this is first element is A, this is A, this is B, this is C and this is D. Here you may call this as x0 to xn. This A is x0. A is x0 and B is xn. Here C is y0 and 
P is Y M. For the sake of understanding, the area of the rectangle is visible. Now. Just you keep in your mind, the area of the rectangle is very very small. D X is width of this grid, and D Y is the length of this grid. And what will be the area of this grid? Area of the grid will be D X into D Y. This area is very very small. What I am going to do? X I Y J be the point I have taken. Is this point I am going to consider X I Y J, and I am going to erect the rectangular box. This is the rectangular box on that particular grid, and here area of the base of the rectangular box is the area of the grid. Just for the sake of understanding, why I have taken this tick zero? This this tick indicates means very small grids we have done. In each grid, one stick is there. Again, there are 24 grids. You may have one lakh grids also. And in each grid, there I am taking a point x i y j. On that particular point, I am putting a stick. You know, so this type of one lakh or more than one lakh sticks will be there. And if you accumulate the volume of all these sticks, so this type of structure will be getting, and that will be the volume under the surface. And that is what we want here. The, mathematically, I am writing f of x i y j be the height of the rectangle. Rectangle is very very small. Base of the rectangle is very very small. The area of the base of the rectangle is very very small. And f of x i y j indicates the height of the rectangle. And base of the rectangle is d x d y. Then sum of all those base of the rectangle is d x d y. And height of the rectangle is f of x i y j. Therefore, the volume of this stick will be f of x i y j multiplied by d x into d y. The same thing I have written. And this is for the single stick suppose. And how many sticks are there? Infinite number of sticks are there. More than one lakh, one crore sticks are there because the size of the grid is very very small. And sum of all those sticks will give us. The volume under the surface. This type of structure you will find. And mathematically, I have written summation of volume of all the sticks. Here, I varies from one to n, and j varies from one to n. If the area of the grid is very very small, then n and n will go to the infinity. That's why I have written here limit n m tends to infinity, and n tends to infinity. Okay, m and n will not be infinity. But it will be very very high, and it will, be, it will be close to infinity. So this can be written as the double integral of the function with respect to x and y. So this was the geometrical interpretation of the double integration. Now some short answer questions on double integration. But the few things I would like to share with you. Here this double integral and this double integral. This is the first integral. This is second integral. This is first. This is second. Limits of first integral. Are the values of y means limits of first integral are given in terms of x. Here limits of first integral are given in terms of y. The limits of last integral or second integral in double integral are always constant because we are uh, dealing with the bounded region. So if limits of first integral are in terms of x, then integrate with respect to y first, keeping x constant. If the limits of first integral are given in terms of y. Then integrate with respect to x first, keeping y constant. Very quickly, some problems on double integral. Evaluate this double integral. Limits of first integral are given in terms of x. Integrate with respect to y first, keeping x constant. X is constant, which is multiplicative constant. Keep as it is. Integral of y with respect to y is y square by two. After integration, put lower limit and upper limit in this way. Put y is equal to x because we have integrated with respect to y and y was variable. Y equal to x and y equal to zero here. X square into x is x cube. Finally, we have to integrate with respect to x. Integration of x raised to power three is x raised to four by four. Two is already there. Two into four is eight. And if you put upper limit, one raised to power four minus zero raised to four means one minus zero, and one by eight into one is one by eight. Okay, this is the value of this integral. Same thing. Limits of first integral are given in terms of y. We have to integrate with respect to x first, keeping y constant. Here, y square is constant term, which is multiplicative constant. 
integral of x square with respect to x is x cube by 3. Okay, we can take 3 outside of the integral because it is constant. Put upper limit, lower limit here. Put x equal to y square means y square raised to power 3 is y raised to 6. Put y, x equal to y, y raised to power 3. Have the multiplication of this 2 and this 2. y raised to power 8, y raised to power 5. Integral of y raised to 8 is y raised to 9 by 9. Integral of y raised to 5 is y raised to 6 by 6. Put y equal to 2, put y equal to 0. Okay, this is the value of this integral. Next problem, value of an integral x dx dy, where region, this integral we have to evaluate on this region. The region is defined like this. Okay, this is the rectangle. The width of the rectangle is 2, height of the rectangle is 3. Now, the limits are not directly given, but it is very clear that x varies from 0 to 2 and y varies from 1 to 3. These are the values of x here. It is very clear. Therefore, integrate with respect to x, keeping y constant, integral of x is x square by 2. Put 0 and 2, lower limit and upper limit. Put x equal to 2, it will be 4. 4 minus 0 will be 4. Now, integrate this 4 can be taken outside. 4 by 2 is 2. Integral of 1 with respect to y under the limits 1 and 3. Integration of 1 with respect to y is y. Lower limit is 1, upper limit is 3. And put y equal to 3 minus y equal to 1. This is 2 into 2 is 4. Now the next problem, double integral of this function. Here all the limits are constant and limit values of x and values of y are same because we don't know these are the values of x or these are the values of y but they are same. Here order of integration is not important. You may either, either integrate with respect to x or y, it is your choice. Integral of under root of 1 minus x square in the denominator, integral like this. Because these two limits are same. Now integral of this is sin inverse x, integral of this is sin inverse y. Put x equal to 1, sin inverse 1 minus sin inverse 0, sin inverse 1 minus sin inverse 0, upper limit and lower limit. Okay, since this is many valued function, but the principal value I will be taking, sin inverse 1 is pi by 2, this is 0, this is pi by 2, this is 0, pi by 2 into pi by 2 is pi square by 4. Now the next integral of this one. Here, the, both the limits are same. Now, integrate with respect to x, keeping y constant. Take integral very very carefully. I am taking integral with respect to x. Then integral of e to the power minus x square into 1 plus y square and x dx. We are taking integral with respect to x. But when you take integral of e to the power fx, here y is constant. Then derivative of argument must be there in the multiplication. Yes, what is derivative? Here I am writing what is derivative with respect to x because we are taking derivative with respect to integration with respect to x. We are taking integration with respect to x. Keeping y constant. Then y is constant. This 1 plus y square is multiplicative constant. And derivative of minus x square is minus 2x. And here minus 2 1 plus y square multiplied by x. So what I am going to do, just derivative of this thing I am going to repeat here by multiplying this by minus 2. If you multiply it by minus 2, in compensation I have to nullify the effect of minus 2 in the numerator. That's why I have written minus 2 in the denominator. And this multiplied by 1 plus y square also I have to write. And 1 plus y square is a constant for this integral. The outside of the integral I am writing 1 plus y square. Now, what happened? e to the power fx multiplied by f dash x means derivative of argument is present here. See, this you can say the formula. The using this result or formula, we can write integration of this thing e to the power minus x square 1 plus y square. Lower limit is 0 upper limit is infinity. We have integrated with respect to x. The dx should not be carried forward only dy will be there. 
So the one by one plus y square, this we have to write here because initially we have integrated with respect to x, keeping y constant. Now minus one by two minus integral zero to infinity one by one plus y square. We have integrated with respect to x. In place of x, we have to put upper limit and lower limit. If you put x equal to infinity, then e raised to power minus infinity will be zero. Is for upper limit I am getting zero directly right here. If you put x equal to zero, is zero multiplied by this constant will be zero. The e raised to power zero is one. Now here put upper limit and lower limit. E to the power minus infinity is zero. E to the power zero is one. Then this thing is remaining minus minus will be plus here. One by two as it is. Integration of one by one plus y square is tan inverse y because it is a formula directly. Lower limit is zero, upper limit is infinity. Put y equal to upper limit tan inverse infinity is pi by two. Tan inverse of zero is zero. And one by two into pi by two is pi by four. In this way we have solved this problem.